I still remember the first time I got hit by a ripple. I was 10 years old, and my cousin and I were hanging out at his place when he got out an album and he showed me that he had just bought. On the cover, a baby underwater chasing a dollar bill. He took it out and played it for me on his new sound system with a massive subwoofer. I remember where a moment Smells Like Teen Spirit came on and the bass from the subwoofer hit me for the very first time. I stood still in goosebumps all over my body and quite unusually, I was out of words. As my cousin pushed me away and started headbanging, it was the first time I had experienced headbanging in my life. I rushed to school the next day to share this with my friends. Smells Like Teen Spirit became our favorite song and we'd go headbanging all night long at school parties. This incident awakened my curiosity and I found myself in a pursuit of more ripples. It started by attending theater plays, local concerts, demonstrations, film nights, you name it. Despite my young age, I knew exactly what it felt like to get hit by a ripple. A sudden burst of energy, increased heartbeat, warmth going through your body, and an adrenaline rush that lifts you up in excitement. The pursuit remained and led me on to my early adult years. First in Brighton and then Berlin. There I became surrounded by a wider variety and frequency of ripples. I had even, even encountered back home. My pursuits were now related to anything that, I would, anything that had to do with art, music, and architecture, architecture being the subject I had chosen to study at university. I often wonder what my life would be like if I had not encountered all these ripples, if energy, emotion, and curiosity have been the wonderful effect of colliding with all of them, then the opposite would be a grim, uneventful, and boring life, to say the least. But what is a ripple anyway? A ripple, in very simple terms, is the transmission of information. At the source of an active ripple, you will find the, trans the receiver, or the transmitter. <laughs> It could be a single person or a group of people. A ripple can take effect through various mediums. It could be a speech, it could be a book, it could be a movie, a concert, a demonstration, a lecture, a Facebook share, any act that can carry information. When a ripple comes your way, you become the receiver. As the receiver, you might find yourself indifferent and the ripple will move on forward to someone else. But if there is a successful collision, that moment is called inspiration. Once you collide with a ripple, you are transformed forever. Then you have two choices. Choice number one, either remain stagnant and keep the inspiration to yourself. Choice number two, activate a new ripple and carry on the effect. I can hear yourself asking, why should I bother, why should I bother going through the trouble of activating a ripple. And of course, I understand where this is coming from. Now, you have experienced the thrill and the excitement of inspiration and even got the urge to activate a new vision. But what if you're criticized? What, what, what if you feel embarrassed? What if, the, what if your, uh, your ripples don't collide with anyone? What if you don't have time? You're too old or you're too young? And what if somebody else has already activated that ripple? I myself have come face to face with this internal monologue with a perfect reason why I should remain stagnant. You see, I was living in Berlin. I was living in a, in a multicultural and vibrant ripple heaven when the financial crisis hit Cyprus and hit my family too. So I returned home. I encountered an environment of stagnancy and pessimism. People surrounding me felt restricted and unmotivated. I, I felt like time had halted for ages. There was a scarcity of ripples. I couldn't believe what I was experiencing. I left ripple heaven and I landed in hell. Up until then, I hadn't really uh, activated a ripple myself. And I had to keep, to keep me sane. What was keeping me uh, alive was all the ripples that I had experienced through the years. You might have guessed by now that I too, choice number two. Despite feeling almost certain that the music I was exposed to wouldn't be of any interest of the locals, 
I took my chances anyway. What was the worst thing that could have happened? Uh, I mean, the worst thing that could have happened was like a night out listening to music I love. I gathered home, picked up 50 CDs of my favorite funk, Afrobeat, swing, and, and I went down to my local bar and I told the uh, pub owner, you know, I'm responsible for the music tonight. He said, okay. My first session led me to my second session and the third session. People started gathering up uh, and to come and listen to my music. DJs were popping up and music levels would, would start to seek all the, mu all the songs that I used to play in my sets. My spirits were getting lifted. My world was filled with music again. And weekend after weekend, hundreds of people would attend my gigs. I was highly energized and wanted to offer more of my inspirations. My interest in architecture started blending with my love for music. And by the end of the year, the Afro Banana Festival was born. A total of 1,200 people att attended the festival for the very first time. The ripple was so strong, it echoed for months in people's conversations. The festival soon became a pole of attraction for numerous people and a kind of refuge for all the local creatives that wanted to join the Ripple. I no longer had to pick up stones to search for them. I was surrounded by them. They were inspiring me as much as the festival was inspiring them. Fast forward nine years later, I ran a non-profit organization called Alternative Brains Rule with my partner. The festival has received multiple awards and has grown to an audience of 3,500 people. It hosts a wide range of arts, theater, world music, light installations, and environmentally friendly innovations. We run a research program called ABR in Lab, which deals with multidisciplinary collaborations with the aim of innovation in the arts. We have set up the World Gallery at the Oncology Center, and we have started a grant scheme for local artists, and we have begun a dialogue between the artists and the visitors of the clinic. I realize now that all of these are the outcome of taking that very first step, the outcome of connecting all the inspirations I received and synthesize them into something. But mostly, I managed to transform the hell that I landed on back then into my own little paradise. I can safely say I haven't had a boring day since then. Not every, not every ripple needs to start with a party, though. There are many ways of transmitting a ripple. Just consider for a moment the ripple strength of some books. <clears throat> the Bible, for instance. We all have a means of expression that feels more natural to us. <clears throat> or it could be that it feels uncomfortable, but it's okay. Because the discomfort is worth the trouble. Besides, you will inevitably get better at whatever you practice. Nobody taught me how to put a festival together. But through time, I got better at it. Also, <clears throat> Don't be fooled, the methods of rippling are not limited to what is already out there. They can be as unique as the blend of inspirations that make you yourself. Take as an example the Cypriot SUP coach who took an 850 kilometer ride to see on his board to spread the message of love. <clears throat> but how do we begin? First, recognize that you've been hit by a ripple. Second, and most important, don't remain stagnant. And third step, <coughs> choose a method and become a transmitter. Start small and fail and try again. Repeat often. It doesn't need to be a grand gesture or an original one as long as you transmit it further. You don't need to be a lone ripple rider either. You might be, count, you might be concerned about being exposed or that nobody will take interest, but the good news is as soon as you activate the ripple, you will attract like-minded people. Get those like-minded people on board. The broader the variety of the experiences, the stronger the ripple it is. You will be surprised by the results. Once you become an experienced receiver and transmitter of ripples, start intentionally and pursuing your ripples according to your interests. Perfecting this practice is your passport of transforming yourself as well as your surroundings. You know, before it all started, I could have easily given up and escaped back to Berlin. But instead, I chose to stay and take the first step to spreading all that I had experienced. This is not a choice you make once. This is a choice you make over and over 
again. As you transform and become transformed by your surrounding, I chose to stay and ripple as much as I could with every single bit of power I had in me. It first rippled to my family and friends, then people I met on the way, and then started rippling with me, transforming our surrounding, even transforming the country. I know that you have all been hit by ripple. And I'm asking you, don't stay stagnant. Ripple away. Don't let your inspiration disappear inside of you. I promise you, this is the least selfish act you can take. Your ripples will transform you and your family. And if you transform, and if you ripple even further, it will transform your neighborhood and your community. And if you transform even further, it will transform your country, even your planet, even the universe. And if you transform with others, your ripples will echo for centuries or even forever. Thank you. <laughs>